Hello everyone, Nicole here. I want to talk today about Transaction Desk widgets. So from our MLS dashboard, I'm going to go to Transaction Desk. And we're going to let that open. And it opens up to your Agent Dashboard. If you are ever confused about what the icons are on the left side, there are three little lines up here that are kind of hard to see. But if you click there, It'll open the menu on the left and it gives a name for each of those icons. And what we are on right now is called the dashboard. Let's close that little menu. There we go. So when you're on the dashboard, you have um, widgets that you can rearrange. These are all called widgets. And I have one, two, three, four, five different widgets on here right now. And I am going to go up over here to where it says lock or unlock the dashboard. And if you unlock it, you have a whole bunch of choices as to what you can use for widgets. The blue ones are just shortcuts. So like right here, I have the AuthentiSign widget, which would have been this one. And it's like grayed out because I'm using it already. And I have the contact widget here that's also grayed out. And all that would do is if I click it, it would take me to where I could create a signing. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to click on the contact one, and that would take me to where I can create a contact for the main file, which is on your left right here. There's the contacts file. Okay. Um, and again, if I open the three lines, you can see that this one is named contacts. So this is like a main file and I always recommend putting all your contacts in here and then when you make a transaction you just import the contact from the main file. Okay let's, let's go back to the widgets though. So blue are shortcuts. So like for instance um, let's grab hmm create this would be for a creating a transaction. It's way down here. And as you can see, it's way down here and I wouldn't even notice it. If I'm up here, I can't notice it. So what I could do is I could get the four way arrow and grab the top beigey colored bar and move it to wherever I would like to move it. Okay. So you can move these around. Um, I personally don't want this is to create a transaction. Um, I don't want that widget on my board. Um, a lot of people like to grab their transactions right from this widget and, and you see how it shows all the transactions in it. Those are what the green ones do. So if I were to grab let's say forms and bring it down. Let's see where it went now because there was no room up there. Here's forms. It shows me all of the forms that it honestly looks like I am using in transactions because they all have dates and times. Um, let's see if I hit go to forms. Let's see what it does. Nope, took me to the residential forms for LVR. So I apologize. I was wrong there. So that would be a, sh um, a way to access forms without going over to this icon. So let's go back to the dashboard. Um, now, isn't that funny? I didn't save it, but it stayed there. <laughs> okay, so this is the form widget. I want to go back up and unlock this again up in the upper right corner because I want to show you that I could make this wider, which there's not much point to because there's nothing there to look at, or I could make it longer. Let's, let's take and shorten it the width way and go down longer. And then I could see more forms. Um, let's see. Notes. These are notes for, let me see. It looks like they are for different transactions because I see different transactions referred there. Um, AuthentiSign. This would be for all the different transactions. So if you're going to use these green ones where you can see items that are in the widget, then I definitely recommend lengthening them because when you first bring them down, let's like take this one. Um, that was called, what was that? 
That was requested document reviews, which doesn't even apply in our company. But I wanted you to see that it opens up kind of small. So if you had a lot of stuff in there, you want to lengthen it so that you can see it. Okay. I don't want that one on my board. I don't want... I really don't use the widgets all that often. I really don't even want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. I'll keep transactions there. I will keep the contact and the authenticine. Hmm. I suppose I could even put that one here. Let's see how that looks. And this I would open big if I'm going to use it. Um, and I don't really think there's anything else I want. Let's see what this get started is. I just want to, I'm curious. Oh, support, get started. That might not be a bad one. Okay, I'm going to close this and lock it. And let's see what happens if I click here. It takes me to the support information. One of the most wonderful things about Transaction Desk is that it has this 1-800 number that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's really why a lot of people like Transaction Desk better than Remind Docs, because you always have support. Last I checked with Remind Docs, you had to email them to, or go on to the online chat, but it was only available during certain hours. And as realtors, we work goofy hours sometimes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to the dashboard up here. And I don't, I don't need that because um, I have it already plugged into my phone. So I'm going to unlock this. I am going to get rid of that. And let's just see if there's anything else over here that I need. I really don't think so. I don't think there's anything else that I want. Um, notes, I've been using that on the individual transaction. I guess it wouldn't hurt. Let's see how that looks. If I lengthen that, yeah, maybe I'll leave that there because it just fills it in nice. It's not that I really use these widgets, but I like my dashboard to be appealing to my eyes. I like uh, my computer to make me feel good when I get on it. I know that sounds kind of silly, but if you're on the computer a lot, you want everything to be comfortable for you. I put bookmarks up that I use all the time. Like this is my business, um, my business browser. So I have it set up for work. And same thing with my transaction desk. When I get in here, I want it to be, if, if at all it can be, I want it to help me to work in the easiest way I can. So things that I use all the time I would want right at my fingertips. Okay, so that is the widgets on the agent dashboard. Now, if we go into our transactions, and I am going to click on this. Um, I, hate, I hate this view. This is called the grid view. I really like the list view. Okay, this to me is more appealing. So you just do what is appealing for you. This gives me more information. Um, I can also click here and just look at what is active right now. Um, whatever works for you. And that this status only works if you remember to change the status of what you're working on. So for instance, I made this test this morning. I didn't change it to active, so it didn't pop up when I was searching active. I'm going to make it active right now. What I wanted to show you in this transaction was that there's another dashboard here. So you have your main dashboard, and then you have a transaction dashboard. And look, I have another lock. I can unlock it and lock it. Again, I have shortcuts, and I have widgets that will actually have information. I have already decided what I like, and I like notes to show, and how you add to your notes is right up here in the transaction. You click notes, and you can add a note right here and type in this box. The thing is, whatever you type is there permanently. So be choosy about what you want to put. Um, I would only put like say, is this a trust? Um, is there some important detail you want to remember? Like maybe I have um, a trust 
but um, let's see, husband died recently. Only wife is on the trust. Whatever is important for you to remember, because even though his name might be on the trust, he can't sign for it if he's deceased, okay? I'm going to hit save, and then here's my note. So every time I come to this dashboard, hopefully that is going to remind me of the situation that I'm in here. These important dates, this one, let me see what widget that was. That was... See, here's the notes. I think this one, important dates, is overview. Um, let me take it off so we can tell for sure. There you go. It disappeared. Now let's bring it back and look at one to the bottom. So now I've got to go down here, grab it with my four-way arrow, and pull it up so I can see it. Well, I want to come on. There it is. So to me, these are really beneficial so that they can give me reminders when I go into my transaction. I can see this stuff right here. This other stuff I have on here, but I really don't use them. The documents, the contacts, the forms, or the checklist. I'm going to lock this right now. I like to go to the right side. Everything on the right side keeps me in the transaction. So if I want to see my documents, I go here. If I want to see my signings, I go here. If I want to look at my checklist, I go here. So I really don't use the widgets a lot. I would be happy with just the notes and the important dates on my front page and maybe the contacts. So I think I'm actually going to do that right now. Let me clean this up a little because I find um, less is more. Even on the computer, I don't want to be overwhelmed. I want to use what I'm going to use. And I could probably shorten this contacts a little bit. And maybe there, because on some deals I'm going to have more people. You will find whatever you set up on this transaction will be the same for all of your other transactions. So now, <clears throat> excuse me, matter of fact, maybe, yeah, I'm going to leave that in the middle. Let's hit lock. And so that's how it'll look when I come to my transaction. And I think that's nice and clean. I like that. I don't need all that extra stuff that I don't use. Okay. <clears throat> Now, I could also, um, when I see these important dates, and I have some dates that I haven't filled in, I could go to Details right here. It's asking me to save changes. And in that Overview widget or Detail widget, Details are what fills it in. When I go in here and I put all the different dates in, let's pretend like this is going to expire 10 03 20, 2023. And I could have just hit on the date too. I could have clicked a date. Here, let's go to a different date so you can see. There we go. I did 1025, clicked it. So now when I, I you have to hit the check mark to save it. And when I go back to my dashboard over here on the right, the transaction dashboard, now it should, oops, I think that was the expiration for the listing. Accept date, list date, offer date, accept date. Isn't that funny? That's not on there. Give me a minute. Let me try something else here. Let's lengthen this. Nope, that's all the dates it shows. Interesting. Okay, so let's go back. I want to put a date in there so you can see it pop up. Okay, let's go back again. And I'm going to go to, I could, remember last time I went to details from here? This time I'm going to go up here and go to details. Oh, I take that back. can't access details from there. Isn't that interesting? But you can access it here. There you go. I got confused. So when I want to go to the transaction details, I can either do it from this widget, right at the bottom of the widget, or I can do it from up here. Okay, so let's go there. And now let's go add a date that will show up. So this was the listing date, the expiration date. Because this is, well, this says it's a listing, so you think those would be important to show up. But let's pretend like we got an offer for 19, and it is going to expire. Oh, um, actually, if it was 419, it would probably expire like in two days. And let's say it was expiring at 5 p.m. 
and then let's go to the acceptance. We accepted it on the 20th. We're going to accept it on the 20th. It's not the 20th yet. <laughs> and it would be closing May 30th. Okay, I just want to see if these dates are going to show up for me on the front dashboard. So I'm going to hit this, save. The check mark is a save. And we're going to go back to the dashboard here on the right. And look at the date showed up. This is what I wanted you to see. And since I've got these two lengthened a little, I think I'm going to lengthen that first widget. So I have to unlock it to lengthen it. There we go. Let's see if they're all the same length. I like that. Lock again. So I have room. If I needed to add more information in my notes, I have room to do that. If I had more contacts, I have room for a couple of more contacts. And I don't know what other details would show up here. Let's see, what else can I fake in here to see if it shows up on the transaction? Let's see. Oh, I want to change the sec status to active. When you're working on something, try to get in the habit of putting it in active, and then it'll be easy for you to find if you just hit your active properties. Uh, properties includes, let's say, refrigerator, washer, and dryer. And maybe there's an outdoor shed that's included um, that is totally portable, though, so we're going to call it personal property. Okay, and so we want to mention that in our contract. Purchase price, we are going to say, is $520,000. let us see if it puts the comma in by itself. It did not, so I better add that comma. Makes the number easier to read. Oh, and it won't even let me. Try it again. Nope. Okay, so now let's hit save again. Oh, let's see. Is there anything else I could add? No. Let's hit save. And let's go back to that details and see what it looks like. Doesn't seem to be responding. Let me try again. Okay, let's hit refresh. Details. Oh, because I'm on details. <laughs> I want dashboard. Dear me. Sorry about that. Going to the dashboard now. And... It does show the expiration date here. Remember, it thinks this is a listing. So normally you wouldn't have your, probably your offer date and your accept date and closing date in here. I would put that in the actual sale for the um, property. And I always have my listing separate from my sales. Um, basically, that's it, though. I just wanted to show you how these widgets worked. And remember, whatever you put in these notes there's no way of deleting them or even editing them. Very strange. I talked to um, Transaction Desk about that. I did call the helpline. And at this time, there's no way of editing or deleting them. So whatever you put on there is just going to stay on there. So make sure it's something pertinent and important for you to note. Otherwise, it's going to be in your way. Okay? I wouldn't put temporary things there. Um, you have task, actually. If you needed something temporary, let's see how this works. Let's go task. I always just put my initials. Let's say um, remember to get a copy of the trust or of the, um, oh, what is it called? There's a page on the trust that tells, I think it's certificate of trust, because sometimes people are not going to want to give you a whole copy of their trust. Certificate of trust. And that tells the title company and you who can sign for the trust. So you need one or the other normally when it's a trust for closing. You might not need it as the agent, but the title company is certainly going to need it. And it's a good idea if the person you're talking to is not in the name of the trust. Like if my trust was the Heinz 
Family Trust or the Allen P. and Nicolette A. Hines Trust. And then you know my name's Nicolette Hines. Well, I'm probably a signer for that trust. But if it's somebody who's not even related to the name of that trust, you better get something that shows they can actually sign for it. Now let's put a due date here. Let's just say I want to get this by Monday and on any time. And now let's hit save. And let's see if we have any widget that that would show up on that task. I do not think we do, but I'm going to double check. That would be nice because to me, tasks kind of need to be in front of your face. There it is. Look at that. We have a task widget. Wow. Okay, let's grab that and let's see where we can put it. Notes are pretty small, so I am going to move this up and put tasks right with it. I like that. Hmm, this is interesting. I might even make, mm, no, that's not going to help. I'm trying to think how I could see more of these tasks. Well, I could slide up and down when I need to see it. I could move this up a little and push this in. Um, here, let's move that there and let's move this one down here. And let's make this longer. There we go. Move that over. And I'm going to lengthen this because I can make myself a list of tasks and then I think I can delete the task. So let's say we're on tasks right now. I had in here get copy of trust. Once I've done it, I can click it to complete. Now let's go see how that looks on my dashboard. There, look at that, it crossed it out. So that is really nice actually. Um, you can use this task widget to right away see what you have left to do on a, um, on a transaction. I like that. So that might even make me rethink my whole checklist thing. Because up to now I have been using this checklist, but I'm thinking I might like task better. Let's see if there's a checklist widget. I, oh, there is. That's right. There is a checklist widget too. Hmm, big decisions. Okay, let's go look at checklists. I think it's this. Let's double check it. And again, I'm getting too many. No, those both say task. Don't understand that because this one is task. Yeah, let's pull this so we can read it. Task I'm using, because remember when you take it down from this widget bar, it turns gray. So that I'm using that here. But look over here, it says completed. Hmm. So I guess that would just show completed tasks. I don't have, oh, here's the checklist. That's what I was looking for. Let's see what that looks like. That shows everything on that checklist. Okay, I'm going to remove this again because I don't want, I just want to be able to see everything I need right here. Otherwise, I can always click on this side. So I'm really not sure, guys, what I like better, whether I like the checklist or whether I like task. Really hard decision. Properties, edit, delete. Hmm. But I think I think I would use checklist for all the documents that I want completed and what goes in RSA. And then I could use tasks for maybe other things that I need to do during the as the transactions going along, like getting the repair request um, filled out, um, setting up the inspection in the first place. Maybe there I would want to write some tasks to myself. But I think I actually use my calendar for that. And it's probably easier to open up my calendar every day on my, um, my Gmail calendar, my Google calendar, than it is for me to go into Transaction Desk every day and check. But there are tools here you can use. 
You just have to decide what works best for you. And basically today I was trying to show you that on the main dashboard, when you first sign into Transaction Desk, you have these widgets. And then when you actually go into a transaction, you have another set of widgets. So customize them to see what works best for you and enjoy yourself on the computer. <laughs> when you make things work for you, you're going to find the time there is much more enjoyable and it won't be such a chore to get on there and work on your transaction. Okay, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.